And good evening, everybody. This is Michael Filigaro. I am with LaunchableSignals.com and also TradersHoppingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Monday, September 20th, 2021. Picture perfect day, directly in the line or in alignment with uh, yesterday's analysis. Uh, we did have a continuation of the third wave and it did accelerate more than once. And the one little surprising factor was that it was not wave three of three that subdivided, it was wave five of, of that third wave that subdivided and extended, and which was fine. Wave, one, uh, wave three is not the shortest wave and it all fit, but wave five is, was the extended wave. I was expecting it to be in a three of three type of a move, and which it did, that did kind of extend a little bit, uh, but it was the fifth wave and the third wave within wave five that extended into its own five. So we still had that three of three type move, um, it just came in wave five instead of wave three. And so no rules were broken, guidelines were followed. And so I have labeled, although we can't really see it because it's all the way down here, today's low, at 14,807.50 as the completion point for minor wave three. So off of that level, we did a beautiful rally uh, in the last half hour, basically almost the last hour, but most of it took place in the last half hour. The market rallied over hundred points. And in fact, it, it actually rallied 200 because the high was 14, 15,014. And that started at 15,807. So beautiful rally and <clears throat> very good finish to a major decline. And in all honesty, just as a trading tool, this type of a blast is you just buy it and you load up because the buyers have been waiting all day for that. And so when it finally came, they piled on and it was buy program after buy program after buy program after buy program. And it just pushed it all the way up over hundred points before it settled back down. Now we're about ready to open in Globex. Right now indicated that the market is going to, well, someone wants to bid 15,016 against a much lower, but hey, it's the NASDAQ. So we may see a very quick opening, come on, taking it up to here, um, up to towards where it closed. Now, what I'm looking for for here, that the fourth wave is gonna be consisting of three waves. So it's gonna be an ABC structure, up, down, up structure. Now, if that's all we're gonna get in the down part. It's gonna be very, very shallow, but, it, we may have to accept it. In fact, I'll just go down to the uh, 15 minute chart and we'll take a look at what was what happens inside there. Uh, let me open that up a little bit. Too much. All right. Uh, but even on that little wave, it doesn't look totally complete. So we're opening up at 03, pushing a little higher, but we're gonna see what they wanna do. Um, okay, it's gonna do the same thing. So A, looks like we do need to come back down. And I would think that we basically will do about a 50% retracement of this entire move. If we're just doing it here, we're probably only going to go down to 958, 959. Um, and then again, put in uh, about a 100 point C wave. And that would then complete this little fourth wave bounce. And then we get one more decline. Now, that decline should not resemble this one by any means. It's a fifth wave. And again, since we got the extension here, I would not necessarily be looking for an extension within that fifth wave, but from wherever it starts, 
Um, so it would start when wave four is complete. So wave four may get up to 15,084, which is gonna be uh, a 38% retracement of the wave three. It could go up to 15,001, what is that? 170, and that would be a 50% retracement, but that should be about the max. Now, as we know, the NASDAQ has this tendency to really just go nuts on these fourth wave um, corrections, particularly when there are bounce. There's, the whole world is thinking like, that was it, we're back on, we're gonna rally, and then suddenly it stops and we just decline. So that's why I'm gonna include these upper levels. Right now though, the 20 day moving average is sitting right at 15,083. And that coincides with that 0. 0.382 level. So that's kind of where I would be looking for this fourth wave to kind of come in. And again, A, you get a B, maybe it comes back down to 937 to 9, what did we say, 955, and then blasts once again. I've been looking all C waves, remember under Elliott, all C waves consist of five waves. So it's a one, two, three, four, five. Wave two corrects wave one, wave four corrects wave three. And then out of one, three, or five, we should get an extended wave. One of them should extend. Most likely it will be three. So once that is complete, then I will be able to add one more extension. And that will be from the top of where wave three began to the bottom of wave three to the top of where wave four crests and begins to turn lower again. And then that's going to give us our levels for wave five. Now, most common in the relationships on the Fibonacci basis between wave five and wave three is that wave five will be 0.618 times the length of wave three. And I mean, we can put in, which I'll do right now, this is just a guesstimate, okay? Simply a guesstimate. And what is this? Put it and then I'm going to go, oh, well, let's take it up to here. Let's just say that this is where it ends. So open this up a little bit. You can see there you go. Again, as a guesstimate, and that's, that is saying that wave four will come up to this 3A2 level. So Obviously, wherever it does end up topping out and turning lower again is where I would then redo that uh, Fibonacci extension. But right now, as the guesstimate, here's kind of what we're looking for. It is putting in a new low below wave three. And that is uh, one of the requirements of the fifth wave. Can end in a failure, but I'm not necessarily looking for it right now. Um, we did see a lot of damage. I don't believe that the market is now just going to totally shrug off the reasons that we sold off today and just resume the buying. But again, stranger things have happened. So again, we're going to be looking very closely at the structure and then at the turn and seeing what kind of structure we get put in after that. So that's what my focus will continue to be. But in terms of trading as a day trader, we continue to trade what's in front of us. And that will be following what the price action and the moving averages are telling us. And after this, on the hourly chart, very bullish candle. So it does not surprise me to see people coming back in. They are already anticipating. Uh, obviously, they're, they're fulfilling their own orders to see what they've got to do something to uh, either get flat or just add to a position or whatever position adjustment, but the basis would be you get a huge engulfing bar like that on an hourly chart. You're going to expect follow through, but normally we look for about a 50% retracement back and that puts it right there, actually. That's about a 50% retracement of that whole move. This move, it was basically 200 points. I'm going to look for 100 points now. And that's actually even a bit lower. 
So possibly uh, 14,937, that's yeah, about 40%, let's say. So, but that's still a good level. And then that is where I would be looking to buy it. Now, again, if it doesn't, comes down a little bit, goes back up and starts to break above this level, then I likely would take a shot. Again, this is an hourly chart. So we would be looking for something like this on the lower timeframes that, that I use, the one minute, the two minute, the five minute. Those are gonna be much more uh, clean, but on an hourly, it's a bullish candle, hands down, no matter what. Now, also what I wanna add to today analysis is that out on the daily candle, I wanna show you the power of these moving averages and what happens. So yesterday we had broken the 20 and closed below it. That indicated initial weakness. Today we rallied up a little bit in Globex, uh, but then started to fall. And then when we broke the 50 day moving average on the daily, it was a stronger signal and we started to accelerate further. We had several rounds of acceleration as the market went all the way down to there. And then of course the buying began so that to come back. And I think that that's where it tries to get back to. On a daily basis, you would expect that it's going to try to get back to that 50. If we take the 50, then A, they're really shifting it back around to the weakness being taken care of. Um, I don't necessarily see that right now. I see that we have a little bit of a bounce and then we should have an additional uh, decline to complete on a minor degree level, the first five waves down. Now, whether that's going to be labeled as intermediate wave one or intermediate wave A, that's out there. We'll deal with it once it occurs. But I am still would be looking for, no matter where this ends, a fifth wave down to take out that low put in a new low. And again, once that occurs, then I would be in a much better position to begin to add to those. So let's get rid of that extension. And I'm going to get rid of this uh, because I want to add one additional so that we have some additional possibilities for the downside. I'm going to remove that one. I'm going to bring this back to the four hour chart so we can see some of what is happening now. Let me just open this up from here. It was such a classic, beautiful third wave. It, it, if you remember yesterday, I talked about the point of recognition. And during that point of recognition, that is where the market, the participants begin to realize, oh, we are having a significant trend change. And in this case, the trend change was from up to down from bullish to bearish. And once that occurred, it started to accelerate. Once that recognition is made, it just forces a lot more hands to come in and a lot more selling to take place. Now, the bounce off of that is also pretty normal for the intensity of the decline. <laughs> you have a lot of position traders, um, swing traders, day traders, all coming into participating. Like I said before, they waited all day for it. Every time this thing would bottom, it, they would jump and try to rally it back up and it failed. They try again and it failed. They try again and it failed. You can see one, two, three, four hours of our day were spent sailing south and with intensity. So, uh, Buyers were squashed, squashed, and squashed. So when it finally did begin, and the baskets came in in, in size, everybody jumped. Everybody came in. And to be honest with you, trading it in that last half hour, it was easy to, to make an additional thousand dollars. It truly was. And that's my point. These types of moves when you can just step in without having to think, oh my God, we're rallying and we're not gonna go down, who cares? We're day traders or you're a swing trader or whatever you're doing, it's time to participate in what's happening in front of us. Now, you do it with caution because with, this, with the intensity of the decline that we saw earlier, 
when it starts to rally, I've always got my, my eye back out there looking to try to determine, oh, those sellers are going to come back. Those sellers are going to come back. And even at the points where normally uh, a larger player comes in to um, take care of what they need to take care of at the end of the day. And I thought with all of the deep selling that we saw today, the hard selling that we saw today, that they would likely come in because I believe it's a fund manager. And they would come in as a seller because that's when they have their uh, redemption. So people, they go sell, I'm, I'm getting out now. And then the new money, you know, people coming in, putting money in. And they did not come in as a seller, they came in as a buyer. So that was the big surprise for me today. And it was right at the end of the day. But I was glad because I chose not to trade it. Um, but from that point, the market rallied another $50, $60 from that point. So if you're willing to trade and you're willing to trade all the way through the end of the day, there are opportunities on days like today, big opportunities. And again, it has to do with reading the price action, reading the, the candles. And on the lower time frames that I use, they become much easier. Again, here's that, here's that incredible rally. That's on a one minute chart. And just like, I mean, yeah, there was selling, but it was every last one was a buying opportunity, buying opportunity, buying opportunity until the very, very end when we, when we sold off right after the bell. And then they just are buying it back again. So, all of these charts. And right now, you can see on the one minute how it swings all of the moving averages up. On the two minute, how it begins to swing the mover averages back up. But that five minute, of course, is a bigger boat. It's gonna take a little bit longer to get it going. And, but it has, look at the 50, look at the 20. And there's the four and the eight. So the last holdout, of course, is, is the 200 day. And to be honest with you, that's kind of where I'm thinking it's gonna to go to complete wave four. Um, so we'll see, we will see, but continue. Look at these fabulous five minute bars. Up, 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 up. And you kind of notice, I'm gonna put in this kind of like a doji, like that bottom was up there, but see, this is the one that kind of went, okay, we'll follow through two ticks and then bam. Um, now, mind you, that was the bell. So how much you wanna trade after the, after the market is, for all intents and purposes, closed. I don't know. Um, I was done before that. But in any case, we follow what the price action is telling us. We follow us what these bars are really. Look at the size of these bars. They were beautiful. You know, when you get this blast, when you got that little pullback, it was like get in and get in. Um, and so in any case, it was a great day. And it was type of a day that if you got caught in something and you didn't honor a stop and you took a hit, you just got to pick it up, got back into the groove and you were able to make substantial back. And, and I'm gonna say this example, I put in myself today. I got stuck in a trade and I was looking for it to go up and it didn't actually really much earlier than all of this. And the market just kept to go down. And I did not even honor my own methodology for stopping the trade. And so it cost me. And I was up very nicely in the day. And then suddenly I just put myself down. So I just kind of got it together and I stepped back and I thought, okay, this is not impossible. And I just uh, made it back. And my goal on most days is to make $1,000. So I was up, I think, eight fifty dollars when that trade took place. And that put me down, I think, 400 So I had dropped about 1200 And I still turned it around and, was, and ended the day up over $1,000. So that's what I'm talking about. When you get days like today, it is you just keep trading, keep trading. Honor your stop levels. Honor your methodology for that stop. Don't let a trade go. There's too much trading. So by me letting it go, I missed 
you know, say I got out after one bar and they was telling me no, you, you take your hit and it would have been minimal. And then you turn around and realize, oh, we are gonna go down and you play along, you get into the market and you trade as it goes lower. And then you wait for your next signals. And you say again here, big down bar, then five minute, but that's okay. That's the example I'm gonna use. Here was the entry, you played it. And then as soon as it kind of got to this next bar turn green, you are out. But then it goes up. Now this is, this is the failure stuff that I'm talking about. And as soon as it failed and it came back down and that bar started red and it broke right there, you shorted it again. So you're shorting it at 873, let's say. Look how far up and down, went down to 36, 40. That's 40 NASDAQ dollars at $20 per point. On a one line, it's an $800 trade. I would like to do those every day, all day, right? So then it got a little funky, but then we ran down to the low and then, the next came. So you can see at 1220 my time, which is uh, 320 in, in uh, back east. And so in 50 minutes, they ran it over 100 points. Beautiful trading. More on that. I do it every day in the trade room, folks. So we try to really lay out these trades for people. And uh, if this is something that you might have an interest in, that you want to find out more about how we're trading and, and how we're doing, um, please take advantage of the uh, promo that I'm continuing to run uh, through the month of September and a uh, very low cost to come in and try us out for a month and see if it's something that is going to work for you or not work for you. In any case, check it out. Uh, I'm always open to answer questions. You can email me and... Uh, or leave me a comment on uh, YouTube and I'll pick it up from there. Again, thanks for uh, listening to me today. Uh, good luck trading tomorrow. And uh, the next update will be on Tuesday, the 21st.